Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. May God bless you all greatly. We thank our God because He allows us to have this wonderful time to exalt Him, to glorify Him, to enjoy of His presence, to recognize Him for all His marvels, for all His greatness. Let us pray to our Lord. Let us tell Him that we are here to give Him the first place, to give Him the honor, the glory, and let His name be known. For all of you who are joining us for the first time, what a great joy it is that you're here enjoying of this service. Let us pray to the Lord and tell Him, Heavenly Father, God of heaven, you are powerful, wonderful, and holy. The honor and glory is for you. The praise is for your name, for your mercies, for your marvels, for your greatness. Who is like you, O Lord, who does all things and can do all things? The God who works miracles and impossible things. The God who has all power in his hands. You, Lord, are our refuge, our strength, and our shield. We come here before you and we present ourselves to give you the praise, the recognition, and the honor due to your name. To tell you as a church, O Lord, throughout all the nations, because we are one people gathered throughout the entire world to give you the first place and to give you the glory. We want to dedicate this time for you and we want to ask for you to descend from on high, for you to honor us with your presence and for you to accompany us, for you to deliver us, for you to fill us with your knowledge, your understanding and your word and your truth, O Lord, and for you to help us advance in your paths every single day. May you be blessing all the brothers and sisters throughout the face of the earth and all those who are joining us all the brothers and sisters in the churches throughout the world, and all of us who are here to praise your name. Bless us and glorify yourself in your, in your glory. We express this to you in the glorious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the honor, glory, and praise be for our God. Brothers and sisters, let us open our Bibles. We're going to be reading in the book of Acts of the Apostles in chapter number 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 2 we find a marvelous event. We find that moment where the Lord Jesus Christ fulfills his promise of sending the Comforter, and he manifested himself to men amongst those who waited for him. And today we still enjoy of this great blessing. Glory to our King. The Bible reads in chapter number 2 of Acts of the Apostles, in verse number 4 and onward, let us read all together, brothers and sisters, to give the honor and glory to the Lord. Always keeping in mind all the punctuation marks because this helps us not only to enjoy the reading, but also to understand the meaning of all the words found therein. The Bible reads in verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven, and when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? And starting in verse 14, a beautiful description starts to take place of what happened in that moment and what we enjoy today. It reads in verse 13, Others mocking said, They are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, 
that I will pour out my pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Glory to the name of our God. You may take a seat, brothers and sisters. I invite you to continue this beautiful scripture at home, for you to read it in its entirety, the entire chapter, and for us to be able to read the marvels of our God, because this is what we live in this beautiful congregation, in the Church of God Ministry of Jesus Christ International, a wonderful place in which God speaks, where God manifests himself, just as we read, through dreams, through visions, and especially through the beautiful gift of prophecy. And if today you are here with us for the first time, be it in one of the churches throughout the world, or if you're joining us for the first time online, it's not just by chance. It's not a coincidence. God wants to make himself known in your life. He wants you to know that he lives, that he exists, that he is real, that God is not a myth, he's not a legend, but instead that God is a God of power who manifests himself in the midst of our life. Glory to the name of the Lord. That's why... Let us now sing to our God of glory, the one who does all things and can do all things. Hymn number one in our hymnals titled Doxology, which references the praise of God, that praise of God in his three manifestations, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A, a mystery for mankind, but a beautiful reality that accompanies us and thanks we give to our God for allowing us to understand it and enjoy it. Let us sing to him for his mercy and kindness, hymn number one, Doxology. May the honor and glory forever be given to our King. How wonderful it is to count upon a God who lives, a God who speaks to us, a God who deserves all praise. As a chorus that we also sing here in the church states, all you Gentiles, all you nations, his name worship. Blessed is the name of our King. Let us sing another beautiful hymn, brothers and sisters, hymn number two titled Old Time Power, which has to do with that beautiful passage that we just read. 
Let us sing to our God. Hymn number two, Old Time Power. Praise before our King. It reads in the refrain of that beautiful hymn, O Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. This is something that we have seen for the last 50 years. When God started this place, there were only four people and God said that he would make a great church. Now we find ourselves in over 1,300 places throughout the world and distributed throughout about 60 countries, a little bit more. And the church continues to grow because God continues to bring more and more souls to this place with all the marvels that he does with the pouring out of the spiritual gifts with the fulfillment of his word. That is what the thousands of testimonies that are already published on our website, www.idmji.org forward slash en, where we find our brothers and sisters throughout all the world sharing their testimonies, sharing the works of God in their lives, sharing the miracles that God has done for them. In particular, a sister testified a few days ago how God announced a an illness for one of her loved ones. As we know, when God announces many things, we always need to pray. We need to pray for the bad things to not happen or for them to have a lesser effect and for the good things to come to our lives as God promises and for us to continue his path. And the sister did exactly that, praying to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy on my loved ones, protect them. Shortly thereafter, her daughter was diagnosed with a very aggressive cancer. It had been there for about eight months and it was metastasizing throughout her entire body. It started in her lungs and her bronchi and it was little by little spreading to her bones and to her liver. And it was now at a very advanced stage. 
The doctors said that she didn't have much time left to live, but the sister trusted in the Lord because both of them go to church. And God had also promised her and told her to not worry that he would be helping her throughout the entire process and be giving her the victory. They started to be diligent. They did the human part. They going. They went to the doctor. They submitted themselves to the radiology, to chemotherapy, to everything that the doctors recommended. And they got to a point where the doctors just reaches a limit where they can't do anything else. And the Lord, as he always does, he performs miracles and wonders. They said to her, you're going to lose your hair. You're going to lose a lot of weight. And they painted a very bleak picture. And when it was time for her last checkup, the doctors were astonished to see that her appearance did not deteriorate. She did not lose her hair. She did not lose weight. On the contrary, every single day she feels better. And after running exams, they found out that the cancer had completely disappeared because that is the work of our king. Glory to our God, brothers and sisters. Blessed is the name of our God, for he works miracles, he works wonders, and he is in our midst, pouring out his blessing, showers of blessings, plentiful showers for all his church, for all his children. That's why let us now sing this beautiful hymn, hymn number three, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. Honor, glory, and praise forever be given to our King of kings and Lord of lords. How great is our God. Amen, brothers and sisters. And you know what also is great? Giving Him thanks. How many things has the Lord done for us? They're immeasurable, innumerable, and invaluable. All the things that the Lord has done in our lives. That's why we invite you to stand in this moment, brothers and sisters. And let us now pray to the Lord and give him the glory for his mercy and kindness. Let us give him thanks and the recognition that he deserves. 
We're also going to pray to our God for the tithes and the offerings and to ask for him to continue spreading this gospel throughout all the nations and for him to allow for many more to know that he lives, that he exists, and that he is real. Let us pray to our God. Let us tell him, Heavenly Father, glorious King, God of heaven, you are wonderful. You are the Ancient of Days. You are the Father of all light. You are the King of Kings. We give you thanks for you have brought us to your path. You have allowed us to have this great blessing, this marvelous blessing of knowing you and enjoying your truth, enjoying your word, enjoying your gospel. Because you speak to us, you guide us, you make us promises, you fill us with hope, O Lord, and you bring us forth in our lives. You help us press on. We thank you, O Lord, because you provide for all of our necessities, because it is you in your kindness who work with great power. You are the one who transforms us, who changes us. You are the one who has filled our lives with what's most important, with peace and joy, but with a peace and joy that is not like what the world offers, because what the world offers is ephemeral, it leaves quickly, but what you offer is permanent as that joy and peace that you have placed in our hearts. And so, Lord, we thank you, we exalt you, and we will forever exalt you, and we will forever give you the honor and glory for your mercy, for your kindness, for your word, for your doctrine, O Lord, for the revelation of your doctrine in your house. We also want to pray to you, O Lord, for you to be pleased in your dwelling place of everything that we do for you, along with the act of giving our tithes and offerings. May your sight be set upon it in favor, O Lord, and may your word be spread throughout the face of the earth, throughout all nations. We don't do it out of obligation, but we do it with faith and commitment. And for you to bless the cheerful giver and for you to bless your word throughout the face of the earth, throughout all nations, so that many more may know that you exist and that you manifest yourself. We pray this all to you and express it to you in the glorious and true name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the honor and glory be forever for our God. Let us now sing choruses of praise to our God. We're going to sing it just as the Bible states with, our, with songs in our throats and applause in our hand with much joy, with much happiness because at the end of the day, everything that we do here in the church is for the honor and glory of our God. Let us always remember, brothers and sisters, to use that moment that we have in the instrumentals, both in the hymns and choruses, at the beginning and at the end, to reflect upon God, to think upon Him and to praise Him, to close our eyes, to praise Him for His goodness and His kindness. Let us now sing chorus number one, titled, O Disheartened Wanderer. Chorus number one. And glorified is the name of our Lord forevermore. Let us sing one more beautiful chorus, brothers and sisters. Chorus number two, titled Glorify, Magnify the Lord. And in this chorus, there's a beautiful line that states, Clap your hands with joy, acclaim, and proclaim. Let us do this, brothers and sisters, with much reverence, with much joy, and much happiness for our Lord. Chorus number two, Glorify, Magnify the Lord. Heavenly Father, glorious King, 
We praise you, we bless you, we exalt you. We worship you for your mercy and for your greatness. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, you are our refuge, you are our strength and our shield. God of heaven, you are the God of light and you are the King of power. Praise, exaltation, and honor forever be given to our God. The Bible states in a very beautiful passage, when Philip approaches the eunuch and asks him when he's reading the prophet Isaiah, if he understands what he's reading, the eunuch answers saying, how can I unless someone guides me? We give thanks to our God for he has placed a wonderful person in the church, a person that we all admire because she is our teacher. That's why it is a great joy for me to leave you in the company of our beloved sister, Mary Luisa. May God bless you all, brothers and sisters. May the Lord bless you all on this day. A special greeting to all the brothers and sisters, to all people that are newcomers and first-time guests who are watching this sermon and who are connecting with what we do, what we have planned to do today, and our sermon and today's scripture in the epistle of Jude which is the book before Revelation, and there's only 25 verses, yet it encloses a great teaching that helps our spiritual life. It helps in our growth and progress so that we are more secure in our faith and in the path of our Lord. So today, with so much joy, I'm here with you, and I believe that your hearts are very joyful and prepared for today's reflection. So a greeting to all of you with all of my affection. May God bless you greatly, and those who are here with me, to you as well. May you receive God's blessings, and you may be seated. You can get comfortable, and we will then begin here in the epistle of Jude, an apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, as it says so here in the Bible. And I'm going to wait for you all to find the scripture and be seated and get comfortable and open your Bibles. Those who have a Bible, those who do not have a Bible, I advise you acquire one. And it is better to have a paperback copy of the Bible rather than have it on your phone or your iPad or on the computer. And it is, of course, important to have the Bible and you can have different forms of technology to have a copy. But if you want to learn of God and go in more detail in the things of the Lord, 
it is better for you to have a paperback copy because you can read a verse and then go back. You can go back as many times as you want and reflect on each word, compare it, analyze it, and you will see that you will understand better and you will feel the presence of the Lord more in your life than when you do so through a technological device. And it's not that I'm against technology. I am simply saying that when we need to study the Bible and study it in detail so we understand it, it is easier to do so on a paperback copy. And of course, thanks be to our God for technology. Thanks to God for scientific advancements. And thanks for all of the different ways that we are able to easily do things today. That is something God had said. The Lord had spoken this through his prophets in antiquity. He said that knowledge would grow. Now, the sad thing is this science, this knowledge this technology, some use it for bad things, but we are going to use it for what is good. We will always do what is good. So we give God thanks because he helps us, because he will help us so that we may be upright people that do what is right in the world. And we will always set a good example for other people. All right, so here in Jude... In verse number one, it says, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called sanctified by God the Father. Now, those who are called sanctified, well, it's all of us, all those who have believed in the Lord. They are who are called sanctified by God. They are called to be holy. And it says, and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. And it reads in verse three, beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, meaning Fight for faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness. And that is to say that those who were false began to work. Those who would come in under cover and enter the congregation of God, men who were lovers of themselves and who did not want to do God's will or submit to it, but all they did was to disturb the spiritual lives of the believers who in that time were beginning off in this spiritual race. They were just starting to know God. They had heard about God through the law of Moses, through the people of Israel. But once our Lord Jesus Christ manifested himself and ascended and sent his Holy Spirit and the wonderful spiritual gifts, and that manifestation of our God begins well, then beings begin to know God's path. They begin to know God in a different way, something much closer, to know God closer, and not so far, not so distant as it was through the law of Moses. And so all of the apostles and all of the disciples preached in that time. They taught and they preached but then there were those who were infiltrating in the congregation, false teachers, false prophets. And before we continue in Jude, let us read a little regarding what the Lord had warned us of. 
in reference to false teachers, false prophets of those who would be interfering in the spiritual lives of the believers, that they would be infiltrating the congregations to destroy spiritual lives. Even since that time, the enemy began to persecute the church of the Lord, to persecute the Lord's flock and the fold of our God. So we are going to read a little bit in other books concerning this warning. So in Matthew, Matthew 24, here in Matthew 24, without losing our place in the epistle of Jude, in Matthew 24, we are going to read verses 3, 4, and 5, which say that our Lord Jesus Christ, in those days, he was in the temple in Jerusalem because he always would go to the temple to preach the word. And it says that he was leaving the temple in 24, verse 1, and his disciples came to him and showed him the great buildings, but we're going to be reading verses 3, 4, and 5. Now the Lord does reply to them and says, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now they did not know what the Lord was referring to, but because of history, we know this happened. The Lord's word was fulfilled. But here, the Lord made a warning in verse 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? They were asking the Lord what was going to happen in the end. What would be the sign of him coming back for his church? At this point, the church was just beginning, and they were already thinking about the signs of what would happen when he was to return. Now, in verse number four, the Lord says, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. That is it. They will deceive many, pretending to be the Christ and in other instances, trying to pass off as prophets or people sent by God. And so here in Galatians, let us go to Galatians for a moment. In chapter 1 of Galatians, in chapter 1, Galatians, we're going to see what the Apostle Paul tells us in reference to those that are false. And in Galatians chapter 1, we will read verses 6, 7, 8, and 9. And it says in verse 6, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ. Now, he wasn't so marveled or happy, but he was shocked because there were some who had decided to follow a different path, a different gospel. And he says, and there's not a different gospel. Because there is only one. There is only one gospel. But there are those who have decided to take a different path. Twisting the Lord's path. Verse 7. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you. And want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. That this person be put in the hands of God to receive punishment and the payment 
of their evil works and actions. That is what it means to be accursed. At this point, the apostle, he perceived this anomaly in the congregations, that there was rising false prophets, false preachers, false teachers that were doing things only for financial gain. As they saw the miracles that the Lord began to carry out from the very moment that the gospel is preached, God begins to manifest himself with wonders. People begin to see that there were certain people who had power, especially the apostles who had power. And there were miracles, healings. People were healed and lived normally after having incurable diseases. So these people, their eyes were wide open and greed was stirred up in those who are not sincere, in those who do not love God or are interested in pleasing him. All they care for is financial gain and what they are able to obtain as far as profit and taking advantage of the circumstance that they saw. All they saw was money and greed for riches. And that is why that greed in many began to rise and the word of God began to be twisted. The Lord's path became distorted, but not because the Lord's path is distorted, but of our Lord's path, they created distorted, twisted paths. They were distorted in their own thoughts and in their own greed. They distorted that path and they strayed away from it, all because of money. Somewhere in the Bible, it mentions that people would even charge others for laying on of hands or for prophecy or for healing. They would charge others money. They would request a fee. Many did that. And because some were doing that and they saw others becoming wealthy because of it, they began to distort the path and stray away from the righteous path and of their greed, they created a path of only profit, not a path of joy, peace, or salvation, peace in your soul, but rather they created a path where wickedness ruled and unhappiness ruled in these people. And that is why our Lord Jesus Christ, he warned this. He said, that even false Christs would arise. And according to history, we know of many people who rose after Christ, saying that they too were great prophets, just like Jesus Christ or better. And they began to form their own religions. And even to this day, their religions exist and their followers the only thing that they do not have is God's power. That is something they do not have. The support of the Lord. They do not have it. They have to humanly work. They have to make great efforts to acquire everything they have, but it all is done humanly. And how difficult it is. Because human beings do not have power the power that God has. And that is the power he gives to his children, his believers, those who are sincere, who seek him wholeheartedly. So God gives them that power. He empowers them. He gives them that ability, that support. And so many things happen in life. 
so many beautiful things, miracles, signs, and it is all by the power of God. He uses his followers, his faithful followers, and that is the beautiful thing, the great thing that we live and we have attained or we are opening our eyes to understand and comprehend. And to compare with the life that the world carries, comparing that following the Lord's ways is the most important thing, the best thing that a human being can do in their life. That decision is the best decision to continue in the Lord's ways, in the right path, the righteous path, the only gospel, the only gospel, because the true gospel is that in which God, he empowers, supports, where God endows each person to serve him so that through this person, God may begin to work miracles, signs, wonders, and to manifest himself. So God's power is there. He gives it to his faithful followers. I once again repeat, and that is the beautiful thing that we have in our lives. This salvation God has presented, this path that we be guided by the Spirit of God, and that truly the spiritual gifts are manifested in our lives because it is the only thing that we have, the only sign we have to believe and to know that we are walking in the correct path. Glory to God. We give the Lord thanks for this privilege we have, for these blessings he grants us. And this is why I invite all people, men and women, who say they read the Bible and who say they are Christians, I invite you to prepare your heart for God so that you are sincere. No matter the religion, for example, Christianity, and you read the Bible, if you want to study in more detail and feel God in you to guide you, to protect you, so that you are protected from people that are false, you are protected from lies and deceit, be sincere, love God, Cry out to God so that he show you the true path and he tell you what to do to have fellowship with him because we need to have fellowship with God. Having fellowship with God, God protects his children. He protects them from false prophets and false teachers, false preachers, or false Christs. And so going back once again, here in Titus, well, First Timothy, actually. Let us take a look here in First Timothy. What Paul tells Timothy in 6. First Timothy 6. It reads, verse 3, 4, and 5. It reads, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness or the righteousness of God is a means of gain. This is where it says, From such withdraw yourself. Because it says, that they only cared about gain, preaching the word for gain. And that is what is mentioned in Jude in reference to those false prophets that had risen 
to disturb the spiritual lives of believers. Then in 2 Timothy, here, 2 Timothy 4, it reads, verse 1, verse 1, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure or they will not tolerate or they will not withstand or desire sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, meaning they were curious to hear about others because they speak beautifully or that person is a great speech maker, that person is a great preacher, and when he talks, he makes people cry, or I like that person because he, he jokes a lot, or I like this other person because they dance on stage and have a great show. A lot of people like all of these silly things that have nothing to do with our spiritual life, with being holy, with leading a perfect life before the Lord. What all of that is for is to amuse and entertain people, to entertain their audience. So this is saying that this will occur and it's already happening. It says, according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. So do your work. Fulfill your role in the ministry God has granted you. Blessed is our Lord. And how many times has God, the Holy Spirit, told us that we need to press on and fulfill the work and the ministry God has appointed to each of us. But it is work and a ministry God has appointed, not a man. Because today, man also divides gifts. Man is who divides the ministries and the work to people, gives them titles, titles of apostles, titles of preachers, evangelists. And it is a man, it is a human who gives these titles. But that is of no use. Because the only thing that actually works is what is given by God. Because human beings can give out many titles, but they do not have the power to actually empower a person. That with power they preach, and with power they show they have God. And that miracles and signs happen, or that there is an actual positive effect. There is an answer every time they lay on hands and pray for a person that is ill and that person is healed. That is what needs to be shown. It is with God's power given by God. So God is the one who gives titles, not a human being. But that is what is abundant today in many places. Human beings are the ones giving titles to their favorite people. But God, he has his favorites. And do you know who God's favorites are? They are those who have devoted their heart to God, who are sincere and upright and honest in every sense of the word. Honesty. Those are who are God's favorites. Glory to our King. So we fight to be the Lord's favorites. And here in Second Peter, and we have already read this, in a previous sermon, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 reads, But there were also false prophets among the people. And this was in reference to the Old Testament during the time of the kings when King David and Solomon were ruling. Back in that time, there were those who were false and it says there were also false prophets among the people. This was back in antiquity. Even as there will be 
false teachers. This is what the apostle is saying. He says, even among you, there will be false teachers who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. And that is true. And it also says, by covetousness, they will exploit you. So out of greed, they will exploit you. They will say, okay, I will lay hands on you, but I have to charge you. I'll give you prophecy, but I have to charge you. What do you want me to pray for? And even till this day, I have heard of places where people go and request for laying on of hands for healing. And they are told, depending the disease, well, that's how much we will charge you. If it's for cancer, that's going to cost more than for flu. So people are now setting a price according to the disease. And these are who are false prophets, teachers. This is what this is saying. By covetousness, they will exploit you. Exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. Because these people, those who do and practice these things, they are headed towards destruction. Because God, God is upset, and God is not pleased by these things. So, it is fitting for all of us to be wise, to have understanding, and be very careful in knowing the path that we are choosing to follow. Being very careful and cautious and being wise and having understanding and setting aside laziness and reading, studying the Lord's word all of the time so that we learn of God, so that the enemy does not come and steal our peace. The enemy should not come and destroy our spiritual life. We need to be strong and courageous in this regard. So as in antiquity, there were false prophets, false teachers. Well, there are some today and there will be some tomorrow. But those who have a sincere heart, those who love God and want to please him and love him, God will protect. God shall preserve us and protect us from these things. But we do need to teach and open people's eyes so that they do not fall into these errors. And so let us return to Jude. And this is why this apostle said here, going back to the scripture, I'm going to read, Beloved, while I was very diligent, here in verse 3, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly or that you defend, that you fight for the true path, the true path of the Lord, that path of faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So all of these false people had come in to the congregation of the Lord to destroy the souls. And in verse 5 it says, But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. The apostle begins to retell the story of the things that happened in antiquity to the people of Israel when they lived in Egypt and God delivered them through the hand of Moses. And it says that back in that time, he freed the people out of Egypt, but once they were in the wilderness, some were rebellious and did not do and submit to the will of God. And this is why the Lord destroyed them. He punished them. Let us remember, for example, 
when Moses sent the spies to survey the land of Canaan. And they returned with news and they brought bad news. They came saying that those that dwelled in that land were giants and that they, they looked like a small, tiny animal among those great giants. So they spoke these things, not trusting in the Lord's power. But there were two people who were saved, and it was Joshua and Caleb. They, they did believe, and they trusted in God. They loved God. They believed God was a powerful God. And they said, yes, the land is good and fertile, and there are people living in those places. But there is nothing impossible for God, because the Lord will remove them, and he will deliver this land to us as a possession. They were the only two who were saved. All of the rest of the men who went, God punished them for bringing bad news, for belittling God, for not trusting in God, for thinking God was a being that had no power or ability to face an enemy. So that is what verse number five is saying. That when God brought the people out of Egypt, he destroyed those who did not believe in the Lord. Those who did not believe in God's power. Glory to our God. Verse 6 reads, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, and this is speaking of the angels that rebelled with the devil. Now, that story A part of that story we find in Ezekiel chapter 28, which we will not read, but it is Ezekiel 28, 29, and a few other chapters which discuss and mention the creation of the devil and the way that he rebelled. And so that is the history of the devil. And in verse 6, it says, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, meaning they did not respect God, though they were God's creation, but left their own abode because they followed after that archangel who was called Lucifer. And it says the devil rebelled with his angels and all went against God. But God, he gave a punishment to them. Even to this day, they are receiving punishment and torment. And it says, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So they are still waiting for that great day to arrive, that great judgment day. But in the meantime, they are in a place of torment. Verse number seven. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, now Jude, Jude is listing all of the punishments God gave to many people in different times, different places and different situations. God punished them. So he wanted to highlight that those who had infiltrated into the congregation of the Lord would receive punishment just like all of these other people did. That all will face the Lord's punishment for being foolish, unloyal, and unbelieving, and rebellious. So this is why it says Sodom and Gomorrah, and we've already heard the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities God destroyed because of their evil and sin. So it says, Cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh. Now, aside from committing the sin of idolatry, because they were idolaters, but they also gave themselves over to sexual immorality. They went against what God had taught human beings and how they should behave. And for example, as far as procreation goes and the joining of two beings, a man and a woman, 
and animals as well. God gave them a certain nature. And animals respect that nature and how God made them. But human beings, helped by the enemy, do things outside of what is normal and what is natural to contradict God. So when it says that they gave themselves over to sexual immorality, well, that has to do with men with men, women with women, or men with animals, women with animals or other objects, doing things outside of what is normal and natural. And that is what Sodom and Gomorrah did. Those cities lived doing that, aside from the fact that they were idolaters. And so much was the case that they wanted to sexually assault the angels that had come to their city. But Lot did not allow it. Lot said, here are my daughters, do whatever you want with them. But these men do not touch. So what they wanted to do was assault these men or these angels. So it says that God greatly punished Sodom and Gomorrah. The cities were burned and everyone died because the Lord punished them. For having behaved this way, in a unnatural way, not abiding by the laws of the Lord and what was normal, what was natural, but they gave themselves over to sexual immorality, things taught to them by the evil one. And it says that these cities were set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So not only were their cities punished by fire, but also, in eternity, it says that these souls, from what we can see here, is that they also lost their salvation. And this is very sad. And these are the examples Jude provides to the believers so that we may reflect upon this. This is why when we read the Bible, we read this story, and it doesn't remain in history. The Bible is not any ordinary book that shares a story that was left in the past. No, the Bible, the Lord brings to life. And just as it happened in the past with these cities, the same can occur today. In a certain city or place with a group of people, the same can occur because God is the one who has the power and he brings all things to life. This is why the Bible is a book that lives it lives because God brings it to life with the power of his Holy Spirit. So this is why we must have great respect. Great respect, great reverence, and devotion. Every time we read the Bible, read it with your heart. Because those scriptures and those messages have a lot to say to our life, our soul, our spirit. The honor and glory be for our God. And in verse 8, Jude continues and says, Likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, this is another example. So Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses. So the archangel Michael did not dare Bring against the devil a reviling accusation. But he said, the Lord rebuke you. That is what the archangel said to the devil. The Lord rebuke what you are doing because you want to take hold of Moses' body. But God will not allow it because God wants to place Moses somewhere special. Because Moses was a special man to God. And you want to do this? Well, then God rebuke you, is what the archangel said to the devil. And this was implying that the archangel, who had the ability to curse the devil, to rebuke him, but he was respectful and did not do it. Whereas false teachers, false prophets, and false preachers who have risen in the congregation they had the power and all of the right to pervert the Lord's doctrine and to cause people to turn away from the true path and follow twisted paths. They could do that. They were so daring enough to do those things. This is why the apostle says not even the archangel Michael was able to accuse him or judge him, or say this or that, I rebuke you, don't do it. 
He simply said, the Lord rebuke you. But these false prophets, teachers, preachers are so daring that they get involved in the congregation and then tell people, look, I have the truth. I have all of the truth. I am right. Do not continue following this religion. Don't believe in this. Believe in what I'm going to teach you. Come with me. Let's go. And they take them a different path and teach them they are daring in saying they are right, that they have the truth, and that they are going to convince everyone else to stray away from what the truth is and do what is evil and displease God. This is what the Apostle Jude wanted to make the congregation understand, that we need to compare, that we should compare how human beings have no right, no right to change and distort the Lord's ways and God's judgment, his doctrine, his laws, his commandments. God is the only one who judges. God is the only one who tells us, go down this path and continue in it. No human being, no human being has the right to cause our minds to stray in other things that are not right. May God help us. May God be with us. May God give us understanding so we are able to discern between good and evil. And what is good for me, what is not. And in verse 10, But these, these false prophets, these false teachers who have come into the congregation, these speak evil of whatever they do not know. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the era of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. So the apostle is bringing up all of the weaknesses and errors that those in antiquity committed. And they sinned. They offended God. They lost the Lord's blessing. And here he says, be careful. Be careful in falling into these people's hands, so that the same does not occur to you, as it occurred to Balaam, he was punished. Korah was also punished. The ground opened up and swallowed many different people for having committed irregular things before God. And what happened to Cain? Well, he was also punished. And in verse 12, it says, These, these, these false prophets, teachers that have come up in the congregation of the Lord are spots in your love feasts, meaning that these were people who, back in that time, they had great banquets. These banquets lasted many days, 10, 15 days. They would eat. They had feasts. Those were the love feasts. It says, these are spots in your love feasts. While they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds, he says. These false prophets, false teachers, they are clouds without water. Carried about by the winds. They are also like late autumn trees without fruit. They have no fruit in autumn. And it says twice dead, pulled up by the roots. They are also similar to raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame. They are also likened and compared to wandering stars. And do you know there are wandering stars? physically. It says, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Those wandering stars also symbolize people. Now they do exist physically, but this is comparing and saying that all those false teachers, false prophets that have risen, they are compared to all of these things. Verse 14, now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So all of these false prophets, all of these false Christs and teachers that have risen, to try and distort the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, all of them will suffer a cruel punishment. 
cruel punishment awaits these people. This is why woe to all of those who have fallen in these false ways, in this false word or false gospel, the gospel that is not the complete gospel of the Lord, that is not the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why I say, men and women, if you love and you want salvation, cry out to God and ask God for mercy and for him to show you his ways. If you are mistaken, then to show you what you are doing wrong and where you should be and what place you need to be so that you may attain eternal life and not need to go through all of these punishments that all of these false teachers, false preachers, false prophets will go through, those who teach errors. Now in verse 16, we see how Jude was tough in his teaching and said, these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. He was saying, continue in the upright path, the true path, in God's truth. The truth of the gospel is the manifestation of the Spirit of God. The spiritual gifts and to be guided by the Spirit of God, this is what saves a person from ever following in erroneous, twisted, distorted paths. Or for a person to say, I'm reading the Bible, I'm a Christian, but they are not following the correct gospel, the perfect gospel of our Lord. And the perfect gospel of the Lord is spoken of here in Jude 19 and 20. It says, not having the Spirit of God. So we need to have the Spirit of God. Verse 20, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. These are the signs. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, I will give these signs to my followers. They will lay on hands and heal. They will speak new tongues. Who makes people speak new tongues? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Signs that our Lord Jesus Christ left for his believers. And in verse number 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ onto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now, back in that time, and even in these times, how many people are doing horrible things, unclean things in different places, living and doing certain things that are not fitting, things that go against our own nature, unclean things. So it gives an example and says, if you have lived in these moments or in these places doing all of those things, horrible things, lewd things, sexual immorality, vile passions. He says, hate even your garments. Do not continue using them. That is what this is trying to say. And it says, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, meaning our God, he says, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Glorified is the name of our God. Blessed is the name of our God, and we give our Lord thanks. We thank him, and now we ask the Lord to help us all. And first-time guests, newcomers, I invite you to prepare your hearts, read the Bible, but do so with your heart and tell the Lord, show me where I need to be. What can I do to love you, to honor your name because you are worthy? 
That is what we're going to ask our God. And thank you very much. God bless you greatly. Let us pray. Blessed Almighty God, Holy Father, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks in this moment. Thank you, Holy Father, for the scripture, the scripture of your word. Thank you because we learn many things. Because we reflect on everything that you left behind. Everything that you teach us, even to this day, your power, your Holy Spirit is with us. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you and help us to walk in the upright path, to walk in the righteous path, the correct path, without strain, without having malice in our hearts or any wickedness or any greed or covetousness, but that we follow you, Lord, that we love you with a sincere heart, a pure heart before you, so that your word is fulfilled when you say, who will ascend into your holy hill? Who can present themselves? Well, those who have clean hands and a pure heart, and that is what we want to be, Holy Father. We want to be that. We want to present ourselves before you this way, so that you, Lord, may give us that support, that you may give us power, that you empower us and be with us every time we speak of your word and every time we lay on hands or talk to a person about you, that you be there with us supporting everything so that miracles and wonders, great deeds are done because these are the promises you have made from the beginning for all of your followers. And we want to be your followers, Heavenly Father. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, eternal God, in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son. And I ask, Lord, for all those who are ill, for those who are sick, Lord, for those who have diverse diseases. You know each person's disease. And you also know and you hear everyone's cry and please. They ask for mercy. They ask for healing. I pray that you manifest yourself, that you heal, that you deliver them and that you remove witchcraft, sorcery, that you rebuke unclean spirits, evil spirits, curses that the devil has set. May you destroy it all because you are love and you are mercy. You are power. Thank you, eternal God, in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. The honor and the glory be for our God. Te vengo a decir, te vengo a decir, oh mi Salvador, que yo te amo a ti, que yo te amo a ti, con el corazón. Te vengo a decir, te vengo a decir, toda la verdad. Yo te amo, Señor, te quiero, Señor, con el corazón. Yo quiero cantar, yo quiero cantar de gozo y de paz. Yo quiero llorar, yo quiero llorar de felicidad. Te vengo a decir, te vengo a decir toda la verdad. Yo te amo, Señor, te quiero, Señor, con el corazón. May the honor and glory be for our God. Thank you very much, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you very much to you all. God bless you. And to all of those present with me, God bless you. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you. Yes.